Three, four. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Jaybird says, would I notice a big difference in vMix operation if I s installed a four gig video card over the one gig video card that I have now? If you have a lot of inputs, sure. Okay. If you only have, say, under 20 inputs, it'll make no difference memory-wise, but I'm okay. sure the, uh, the more memory graphics card has more power in it anyway. Uh -huh. um, there's never been better value for money graphics-wise in vMix than the latest 10, the latest 1,000 series of NVIDIA graphics cards. Um, the amount of power they pack in for the price is you know, better than any other previous generation. So if you're looking at upgrading, it's always a good investment. I, I uh, loaned out one of, um, one of the PCs that I had built. Um, I, I forgot exactly why I built it. Anyway, it was based on an i5, and it had a 1080 card in it. And, oh, I know, and I sent it to a customer. They wanted to use it as a backup because they were having a big, a big deal one weekend. And as it turned out, the main PC had a problem with the, the Blackmagic Quad 2 card. So they reverted to this backup PC that I sent them. And the main PC was an i7. They were reverting back to this i5, and they said the i5 was more responsive running vMix than the i7 was. And I thought that was really interesting. Any, I mean, with that brief scenario, any logic to that, Martin, you think? Well, what was the graphics card in the i7? That's the key thing, uh, I guess. Uh, probably like a, a, a 750 or something like that. I don't know. I'd, I'd have to get Yes, the, the 1080 is, is so much faster than, say, the 750 that it would, could make a big difference. So that can make an i5 a better... A better system in that scenario. Depends what you're doing, yeah. 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 Because if you remember these days with the latest NVIDIA graphics, the recording can be hardware encoded, the stream can be hardware encoded, so you're not relying on the CPU as much uh, unless you're doing replay and, and, and things like that. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Um, Matt wants to know uh, in your opinion, is the X99 chipset still to be avoided? Uh, yes, for the time being. Um, it's, it's, yeah, we're looking forward to the X299 that everybody is saying will be announced on the 12th of June at a computer event. Um, and we hope to get a copy of those at the end of June and, and test it out. Um, so, so yeah, the, there are some odd bottlenecks with the X99 that affect vMix in particular because it just does so much with the graphics card. Um, we haven't lost hope, though, of, of finding out what that problem is, if purely just to, from a, a curiosity standpoint. Right. Um, but it does look as though that, you know, it was too, they added too many lanes to the processor that they didn't have a good way of managing properly within the CPU itself. Uh, there's six core processors, you know, which are great, but I think they built all these cores without... Uh, enough bandwidth for all of the, you know, the 40 lanes that are available in that architecture and it just overloads things and causes high latency. That's just the theory at the moment um, about what's happening there, and which only applies to stuff like vMix, which is transferring around so much memory behind the scenes that you don't even realize. It doesn't show up in the CPU monitor. It's sort of a hidden, hidden uh, cost on the system. Uh, but the good news is the X299 processors are based on Skylake. And Skylake is the 6700K series of processors, which we recommended as our Ruby system will work really well. Um, so we expect that that will translate very nicely to them when they release it in June. Gotcha. Gotcha. Jesse's asking, do you have any comments on the new 1080 uh, Ti version with 11 gigs of RAM? <laughs> Oh yeah, we sort of say as an upper limit for vMix that you're not going to use the power and the graphics beyond the 1070. Um, we okay. haven't found a situation yet where you need more than that. So okay. by all means, if you're going to use the computer to play the latest and greatest games, buy the, <laughs> buy the 1080 Ti. But vMix can't really take advantage of it. 
um, unless you wanting to do something really crazy like chroma keying 10 4K video clips at the same time or something. Um, because chroma keying is the only thing I can think of that is the most taxing um, on the, the graphics card that vMix does. Interesting, interesting. So if, if uh, what, what would be a symptom that your graphics card wasn't good enough to do chroma key? What would you see? Would you see latency? You would, would see you as see soon bad... as you... Sorry, I interrupted. Yeah, uh, you could see on laptops, for example, uh, the two things are chroma keying and, and UV map virtual sets. So the virtual sets that have perspective monitors on them and stuff like that. If you load it up and you'd see the render time increase all of a sudden, you can do this like an old laptop with Intel. You could load up uh, a bunch of virtual sets and video clips and do chroma keying and then you'll, you'll see that the, uh, like the easy way to see this is open up, there's a free utility called GPU Z um, and that will show you the GPU usage of the processor and on old Intel graphics laptops if you're doing HD chroma keying with high quality virtual sets, you're going to see that about 80 to 90 percent in a very high render time. Gotcha, gotcha. So what would be a target uh, GPU percentage not to exceed? 70 percent? Uh, well you're usually going to exceed the memory uh, bandwidth limits in vMix well before the GPU Okay. So when we were doing the, for example, we were doing that 4K production last year with three 4K cameras, 4K video clips, 4K recording, uh, and I think a HD stream um, is what we ended up doing uh, for that. We were using around 30% of the 1070. So we were running into other limits on the graphics card well before the, the, the graphics um, uh -huh. processor itself. Interesting. Interesting. All right.